Some of the top threats to the species in Central Asia purely are is the fragmentation of their habitat and the, and the blocking of their of their ability to go from summer pasture to winter pasture or to escape natural disasters. These threats are the construction of railroads, construction of highways, pipelines. These are major issues that, that all the species that live in Central Asia are being affected by. That affects, you know, if, if you have something that prevents a population from moving to where it needs to survive, that affects the ability of, of local people to, to use them as a subsistence resource. That affects um, these these animals help maintain good pasture conditions and so it affects the grasslands ability to, to store carbon. Uh, it, it affects people's incomes because people, tourism depends on, on healthy wildlife populations. So the, there's a whole cascade effect of, of losing some of these species or having, having these habitats carved up and that you know, people's lives become impacted in, in many ways in, in the absence of these animals. So it's something that we all need to be concerned about. Central Asia is, is very important for migratory species because it still has the habitat available that allows these migratory processes to happen. Uh, the landscapes are huge, the ecosystems are, are in relatively good shape, and therefore the animals have adapted to, to living in such, a, such an environment. And, and these arid landscapes are highly variable in terms of their habitat quality, so the, the adaptation to to such a variable landscape is to be able to move and find good pastures. Uh, Central Asia has been remarkably well preserved in that respect. There's, there's a lot of species that still are able to follow their migratory paths or their, their movements as they always have. Uh, the, the changes that are occurring in the region are, are going to have a huge impact if they're not mitigated properly. I think the COP11 guidelines will make a, will make a big difference because it allows organizations to something, it gives them something that they can refer to. Governments have agreed to these guidelines, so they are, they're legally bound to follow them. Conservation NGOs have something that they can look to to guide them in, in what they are trying to advocate for. Development organizations, lender groups can start looking at, at guidelines that they need to follow in order to approve projects. So I think it'll make a big difference in that it starts to make the solutions to some of these problems for migratory species real. If you haven't been there, if you haven't seen the result of, of a barrier to, to a migrated group of gazelles, I guess one way to imagine it would be as if you're on your way to, to work or to school and the route that you normally always take, one morning it's blocked and you can't, it, it, you have to go around, you take the long way around or you just are turned away. You might, it might cause you, um, it's an inconvenience. You might not be able to get a cup of coffee uh, on your way to work, or you might not have time to chat with your friends before school starts. And this inconvenience is, for us, you know, we can complain about it, but if, imagine if you're a gazelle or a hulan that is trying to access uh, better pasture so you can, you can graze better and you can, you can raise your calves better. Imagine if this obstacle is, crossing this obstacle is a matter of life and death. And, and then it becomes much more serious because if, if you can't cross, then you, you're not gonna survive. I think the solutions are all there to, to a lot of these problems. It, it's the willpower and the, and the ability to kind of see into the future is what is important. You know, you, you get one chance. These, these, these things are gonna be there for, uh, you know, 100 years maybe. And the opportunity to make a difference, the opportunity to, to make changes are, are happening now. It's, it's a chance to develop and bring the wild heritage with the country, not develop and leave wild heritage behind.